I'd like to spend a little time and show you a new base motion drill. Hope this is something that can be of interest to you, maybe spark something in your own study and your own ability to move lines in the lower register while maintaining something up above. So the melody up above is going to be really simple. And we're just going to do an ascending line that goes up a fourth and comes back down. Before I get to that, let me say, if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, I do wish you would. If you're enjoying the content, please like, share, and leave a comment. It is always very good to see your thoughts and see what your responses are or questions that you have. If you'd ever like to send me a tip, that would be very nice. And my PayPal information is right there in the description below. So what we're going to do is start everything at the interval of a compound sixth, also known as a thirteenth. So if you're not familiar with why, a sixth, say from G here, I'm just going to go up the major scale. I've gone six steps in the G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, E. If we continue and I take that note up an octave, we'll have that same E, yet it's not a sixth anymore in the sense that it's not six steps away, it's 13 steps away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So when you see something like G, something with a flat 13, that would be that. 13th. The fifth lives right below. The flat seven lives right above. 13. But it's a great interval. It would be a part of C major over G. 3, 5, 5, 5. It would be part of G7 with a 13th on top. 3, 3, 4, 5. G, F, B, D, B, E, sorry. But what we're going to do is Try to sustain that second string note. I'm using my little finger in each case. And we're going to ascend this run here. So I'll break down where these go. This is three and five with first and fourth finger. Third finger on the fifth fret A. B on the second fret of the fifth string up to C. I'm using second finger on the third fret C. Just even if you did that much all over. This is kind of what we're going to do. But even if you didn't change key, just keep the same exercise as a drill, which is what this is. But this also has an element of application in real improvisation, and you'll find this kind of thing in contrapuntal Baroque textures, where something's being held and something's running around. So, three and five, five, two, three, two, five, three. G, A, B, C, B, A, G. We're going to move up the G major scale, the scale of one sharp. So we're going to go to F sharp, E to F sharp to G. So this F sharp, things are going to stretch out a little bit. So here's five and seven, A and F sharp, B on the seventh fret of the bass string, sixth string. 3rd fret of the 5th string up to the 5th fret. I guess I'm still using 2nd finger there. I think you could slide if you want. I'm doing a little pull off. I hope you can widen out and try to reach these things. 4 fret span is pretty normal on guitar for 1 finger per fret. If you can just stretch out a little bit more between first and second fingers. To get that spread. I think that's 
pretty reasonable for guitar. If your hands are quite small and you can't make it, don't worry about it. But if it's a matter of just not stretching enough, really try to relax. Have the hand centered so the thumb is more or less behind the middle finger. In the, I'm basically on the back of the middle of the fretboard there. So if the more you write up, I've talked about this in other videos, but I'll do it again here. The more you write up with your thumb, see what my wrist is doing. So here, the weight of the forearm is engaged. Your forearm's kind of heavy. So if you hang off of the strings with your fingers, with your thumb back behind here gently, you're using the weight of the forearm as part of what's helping hold those notes down. If you raise your, or sorry, if you bring your thumb up, soon your wrist is taking all of that. And I think it'd be really hard to move. I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, people do get by, of course, playing like this. It's viable in some cases, I think. It's for blues playing, for bending, things like that. It's essential. If you want to play Hendrix kinds of chords and whatnot with your thumb, that's all right. It's all good. It's a sound. But as far as doing multi-line playing or, I think, fluid single note playing, you'll probably notice that most people have their thumb back here by now. In uh, We're recording this in 2023. So, I go by all of that to say that you want to be able to reach out, if you can, five, seven, three, five, three, seven, five. Now we're coming up to G, eighth fret. And we're going to go up from seven, eight, five, seven, five, eight, seven, B, C, D, E, D, C, B. So even if I said, look, we're going to do a sequence, and here's where we're starting. And I told you as, a, as an exercise, it's in the key of one sharp, figure out the rest or write out the rest. At some point, you should be able to do that. Because the idea is starting on a bass note, go up a fourth stepwise, and come right back down. And then our next bass note is gonna start from the next degree. So we started on G, we're gonna start on A. The reason I stress this so much as well is that this is the kind of hearing you need to have to be able to improvise in a contrapuntal manner on the guitar, to be able to hear the inevitability of. Now I hope right here that you could hear Boo doo doo. How about la doo doo? How about ba doo doo? How about ba doo doo? So you can anticipate before you play it what pitches are going to sound like in sequence. It's really important. The more you listen to people like Johann Sebastian Bach, that's who I'd recommend, the more you'll hear these kinds of sequences and grow accustomed to tracking them while other elements are happening at the same time. So we were up to seven, eight, five, seven, five, eight, seven. I'm kind of going quick with the numbers because I hope you don't need them so much. We're going to go up to A on the 10th fret of the second string. Now there I left the key by mistake. So we want to keep that F sharp in there. So 10th fret, eight, 10, seven, nine, seven, ten, eight. And the reason we're having to do that, the reason it's a different pattern, is because we're conforming to the scale of one sharp. And that's where that F sharp is living. Right there. Now this one will be exactly like our first one at A, at G, sorry. So 10 and 12. 12, 9, 10, 9, 12, 10. And now we here we are at with a C in the melody, 13th fret. 12, 9, 10, 9, 12, 10, 9, 12. So here's 
14 and 15 if you have no cutaway and you can get up here that's great if you have a cutaway you can get there if you don't have a cutaway this might be you're going to kind of be over the body by now but for this kind of playing i think you'd want a guitar with a cutaway so there's a lot of nice things that live up here kind of the magic music box realm nice up here plus it's it's in miniature it allows you to see if you're up here above the 12th fret it's as if you can see from first fret to seventh fret all within the span of your hand more or less down here we're probably not taking in that much of the fretboard all at one time we can learn to do so I'd recommend it the way to do that is to get to know all of the note names and how they belong to different scales so in the key of one sharp here second string looks like a certain pattern we can go over this sometime if you have questions please ask so 14 15 12 14 12 15 14 with the 15th fret on the second string d and that's going to sound like d going to sound like C, first inversion C. This one's going to sound like G. This one, an A in the melody and a C in the bottom with a two of the th or sorry three of the four pitches C D and F sharp are all part of D7 so this more or less sounds like D7 and then G G first inversion D7 again over A C chord over G so these all imply different chords. So now we're here where we started, but an octave higher. 15 and 17. 15, 17, 14, 15, 14, 17, 15. Maybe something that's interesting. Let me know if you have questions or comments. And until we meet again, I do wish you, as always, a very good day.